All right, now we're going to take a look at the solo for Texas Flood. Now, obviously, this solo is a, almost a couple minutes long. And so it's a lot of notes to get down, a lot of phrases. So we're going to take it piece by piece, phrase by phrase. Um, and it's like we said, it's good to just kind of learn a couple phrases and then go back and start trying to play them with the record. Um, then come back and learn a couple more phrases and just add on to what you know of the solo. And just kind of gradually get it. Because otherwise, it can be kind of overwhelming how, many, how much, like, notes and phrases, especially since a lot of this stuff is kind of similar. So let's get started here. Uh, once again, we're in standard tuning and we're going to have the first phrase kind of builds into the solo. Coming out of that uh, second verse, we have this. All right, so what's going on there? We have the eight of the on the B string twice, then six, eight, on the high E with a bend at the eight, whole step bend at the eighth fret. Then another bit, two more bends on the eight, eight, and then six over to the eight on the B. Then pick B quickly twice, then a quarter step bend on the six on the E, and then just come up. And just grab like around the 13th fret, the B and the E string, and slide it down quickly. So we got. All right, the next phrase is like this. So once again, we have the same thing here. Leading into those from the 8 on the B up to the 6 to the 8. That's similar to before, so I'm not going to break it down. It's, it's obvious he just playing those same three notes over and over again. Then we get to this lick. Similar to something we did earlier, which is a whole step bend at the 8th. And then just pick up that 8th fret. And you're, you should be fingering the seventh behind it too, letting it help the bend on the eight. And then just pick up your third finger and pick it now that bend is on the seven. Then play six, then the eight over on the B. So all together. All right, now we have another one of these long bending phrases. So that's starting with the eight, two eights on the B, and then a quarter step bend on the six, then a half step bend on the seven, then a half step bend on the eight, another half step bend on the eight, and do a whole step bend on the eight. And then eight six, and then over to the eight on the B. All right, now we have a little bit of a, a longer run here. Slow down. So what's going on there? We have five eight on the B, quarter step bend on the six on the E. Then come down, I'm going to pull off from 8 to 6 on the B string and slide down to the 3rd fret. Roll over and grab the 3rd fret on the E. Pull off 6 to 3 on the B. Whole step bend and release at the 5th fret on the G. Pull off the 3. Then over to the 5th fret on the D string, back to the 3rd um, fret on the G string, hammer on to the 5th fret, and then bend it up a whole step. Grab the two threes on the B and the high E quickly, and then come and grab that 3rd fret on the G string again. So I'll go through that again slowly. All right, 
The next leg. All right, so that was a little bit longer. We start the fifth fret on the D string and do a slight bend at the fifth fret on the G over to the three on the B and the E, back to the three on the B. Gradual bend now, the sixth fret on the B string. Then we're gonna go back and forth four times between the three on the high E and the B string. And after that last hit on that high E, you hit that, you do a half step bend and release at the fifth fret on the G string. Now that's kind of pre-bent. Pull off to three, over to five on the D, hammer back on three to five and do a whole step bend on the five on the G. Over to the high E three, then down to the three on the G. So, so far. Then that lick where we pull off from three to five on the D and hammer on to the five on the A string. Then grab your second finger really fast from the second fret, slide up to the 16th fret. Then play 15 on the high E to 15 on the B, then back to 15 on the high E, then a whole step bend at the 18th fret on the second string. Then play 15 to 18 again, and then slide down with your third finger, quickly slide down to the 5th fret on the G string, half step bend on the G string, then pull off 5 to 3, back to 5 on the D, grab the low G here on the 3rd fret on the low E string, and then we uh, have this last phrase. Hold that bend at the fifth fret on the G, then three on the high E to the B, six on the B, back to three on the G, slide from six up to eight on the E string, and then down to the um, eighth fret on the B string, twice. So, so far, here, well, that total phrase, slowly. Now we have a long bending line starting with two eighths on the B string again, then a half step bend at the six, then a three and a quarter step bend at the six, then a half step bend at the seven, three of them, half step bend at the eight, twice, three quarter step bend, and then three whole step bends at the eight. So it's just kind of a gradual building up the notes. All right. So from there, we're going to end that little bending phrase with another quick whole step bend at the eighth fret, sixth fret, and then the eight on the B. All right. And then the next phrase goes like this. Now we've seen that before. It's just two B's up to the six on the E, 
Back down to the B, twice, and the same look again. And then we have quarter step bend of the sixth, eight on the B, seven on the G, and six on the B. All right, now we get into this little tricky bending phrase here. It's gonna sound like this. So what's going on there? It kind of, kind of sounds like chaos and it's kind of notes being bent everywhere. Oh, we're gonna start it with two eighths on the um, B to the sixth fret on the high E. Then you're gonna bend up and get two strings underneath your third finger here at the eighth fret, the B and the high E. And you can reach, when you bend up, you can grab the other strings, like the G string as well, if you want. And you're gonna be bending those strings up a whole step together. You bend twice there, then come down to the seventh fret and do the same thing, but only up a half step. Release. Whole step into the eight now again. Half step into the seven. Back to the eight twice. Whole step in. Then a whole step into the seven. Release. Then down to the six. Whole step in and release. Then the eighth fret. Pick this. Pick the eighth fret notes. Then bend them. And then we're going to end it with a half step in at the seventh fret and then bend it up to a complete whole step and then play six and eight on the B. So that'll really tear up your fingertips if you practice that for a while. <laughs> but So it's good just to kind of really be raking into the strings. Just kind of mess around with it. Just really try to dig in and um, don't try to hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. All right. The next phrase is going to be like this. All right. A little bit longer again. We started with the two Bs, then a quarter step bend at the half, at sixth fret here. It's kind of a half step bend actually. And then we're going to rake backwards across the two threes on the B and the E string. Then we're going to start the main lick, which is going to be a whole step bend at the fifth fret on the G, to three on the B and the E. Play six, kind of dig into that six, maybe a slight bend, to the three on the B, over to the five on the E, pull off, I mean hammer on, then pull off three to four on the high E. Then play 6-3 on the B, whole step bend on the high E at the 6. So we got. Then we're going to do a half step bend at the 6th fret. 3-3 three to three on from the high E to the B, whole step bend at the 5th fret on the G. Three to three on from the B to the E this time. Six fret on the B. And then grab the two threes from the B and the E string together. So we have whole step bend and release to the five on the G. Pull off to three. Over to the fifth fret on the D. Hammer back from three to five on the G into a whole step. Whole step bend, three uh, to three from the B to the E, back to the B on the three, uh, the, th the three on the B string, sorry. Then play six, three, on the B string. Whole step bend and release, the fifth fret on the G, pull off to the three, down to the five on the D, and then 
you finish that phrase out on the third fret on the G. So let me play that second half of that phrase for you. Then we go to this next phrase. All right, so that's leading in once again. Same thing we did before. And then we do this. Little course that bend down to six, back to the eights on the B. Then go six, six, eight on the high E with that bend high uh whole step bend at the eighth fret. And then start picking it, you know, kind of rapidly in kind of a triplet sound. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Why you slowly release the bend. Now you can cut that off a little bit if you can let your thumb the edge of your thumb be muting the string right after you pick it. That's how he gets that kind of really staccato feel. He's kind of letting his thumb, edge of his thumb, mute the note as soon as he hits, picks it, and it gives you that kind of feel. When you get to the bottom of the bend, you're going to bend up three times, half step bend on the eight. And then you're going to do a half step bend and release, pre bend, half step at the seventh fret, three of them. Then a whole, then just bend it up a half step, then six, eight on the B. Twice. So we have this. And we come into the, the next phrase. going on there. So we start with uh, two eighths on the B string, sixth fret, and uh, another whole set bend on those two eighths here on the um, on the B and E strings, then back to the sixth fret, half step bend, and then just kind of slide up, grab those two strings at the 19th fret, and slide it down. And then we start this lead phrase which the first one's like this. So we have half step bend at the fifth fret on the G, uh, third fret B to E, and then six three on the B, five on the high E. You've probably seen this look a few times. Bend it, uh, hammer and pull off three to four on the high E, down to six on the B, and uh, grab those third fret of the B and the E string. Quarter step bend at the sixth fret. Uh, just kind of dig into it on the uh, high E string. Then three on the E. Then six three on the B string. Whole step bend at the fifth fret on the G. Three from the B to the E. Down to the sixth again on the B string. Hit those two threes again on the B and the E. Pulse that bend and release at the fifth fret on the G. Pull off the three. Pick the three again. Then hammer on to the five. Slide it to seven. Grab that six while you're still holding the seven. The six on the high E string. Then slide down to the five. Pull off to three over to five on the B, I'm oh, sorry, the D string. So we have All right, then we have this lick.
So we have, you're going to play the 6th fret on the B, slide into down to the 5 on the G string, pull off to 3, down to the 5 on the D, hammer back on 3 to 5 on the G and slide up to 6, and pick that 6 on the B string and quickly slide back down and repeat that lick. Um, again, which was... Okay, so he repeats that lick a couple times where he's going... Alright, so after the second time, when you come back, sliding into that 5, you grab the 3 on the B and the G string this time, pulse that band at the 5, then the 3's at the B and the E string, then uh, a little pause and vibrato on the 3rd fret G. So that's kind of like a slippery lick right there, so you want to just... Then we come down to the 5 on the D to the 5 on the A. Pick it, and then pick it again and slide it to the 7. Then play 5 on the D, back to five, 7 on the A string. Come to 3 and 5 on the G string. Then click five again, half step, bend and release. Then a long, a little slight held bend, half step bend to the third fret on the G string. Then play five, three, five, four. Uh, that's five threes on the D string. Five, four on the A. Hammer pull three to four, back to three on the A. Then six, three on the low E. So we have. After that 6-3, in the phrase with the 5th fret on the D string. Alright, so that's kind of a long phrase. It's, it's just about creating that sound though, I mean, creating that effect. So it's, it's meant to sound like it's kind of all over the place. Alright, and now we're to the last phrase in the solo. And we're going to start it with the, this is what it's going to sound like. So we had the th thumb at the 3rd fret on the 6th string, slight bend of the 5th fret on the G, play the 3rd fret B to E, to the 6th on the B, then the two threes on the B and the E together, whole step bend at the 5th fret now on the G, pull off 5 to 3, to the 5 on the D, back to the 3 on the G. Then pick 5-3 on the D, then 5-4 on the A, then hammer on, pull off, 3 back to, uh, to 4, back to 3 on the A string, then pick 6 and 3 on the low E string, then play 3-5 on the D to a slight vibrato at the 3rd fret on the G. So we have... Then play 5-3 on the D again. Then this time we're going to go 3-4-5 on the A string. You're going to pick the 5th fret on the G string twice. And then add the rest of the notes that can make up the D7 chord, which is 5th fret on the A and 4th fret on the D string, along with that 5th fret on the G. Okay, so once it's set, just take this slowly, phrase by phrase, and I think you should learn, memorize two or three of them, the phrases that we go through in a row, unless it's a long one, then just memorize that one, then play along with the recording. Remember, you have to be tuned down a half step to play along with the recording, and then come back and add another phrase to it, and just slowly learn it that way so you can get it memorized. It's sometimes harder to memorize things that are very similar. It's kind of hard for your brain to figure out which one's going. 
So you really need to know the sound of all the notes in this solo. And then since it's so repetitive, your fingers will just kind of automatically go to those notes that you just heard the sound so much. So that's usually the best way to learn solos of this type. All right, so stay tuned. We have one more. We're going to take a look at the uh, third verse next.